For this lesson, we're going to be focusing on pulse modulation. Now, just to give you a little modulation overview, there are four types. Continuous modulation, which is your amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, which we already went over. Your pulse modulation, digital modulation, and then your spread signal modulation. So when you see your specification sheet, say analog modulation and digital, well, the pulse modulation is kind of the in-between. It's your analog to digital modulation. And we're going to go over this more in this lesson. Okay, so what is pulse modulation? It's the process of using a series of sampling pulses to modulate an analog signal into which the output is encoded from the discrete samples to be transmitted. Simply stated, you're basically digitizing an analog signal. Now, in some of your PE reference material, the pulse modulation may consist of two subcategories, which is pulse code modulation and delta modulation. And we're mostly going to focus on pulse code modulation as far as the calculations and the sample problems. When digitalizing an analog signal, it consists of three stages, sampling, quantization, and encoding. So we have a little illustration below. An input signal is being sampled, then quantizing, and then encoding, which is usually your outputs is in ones and zeros. So let's go over our first stage sampling. Sampling is the process in which a continuous time signal is sampled by measuring its amplitude at discrete instances. So every time a signal is sampled, the amplitude is measured at that given point in time. So on the illustration below, we have an input signal in blue and it's being sampled by a sampling configuration or circuit. And you're gonna have an output, which is in purple, that shows each point where that wave was sampled. The very interesting part about the sampling process is that there's various types of sampling modulations and sampling methods. For example, for sampling modulations, there's three typical types, pulse amplitude modulation, pulse width modulation, and pulse position modulation, which we have an illustration on the right that you can see the difference between the three. Now for this lesson, we're going to be focusing on pulse amplitude modulation due to the fact that that's what's referenced in your FE handbook and allow your PE material. Just like what was stated in the previous slide, there are various types of sampling methods. The three common ones are instantaneous sampling, natural sampling, and flat top sampling. The instantaneous sampling would be ideal, but not very practical. The natural sampling is very practical. It's a sampling in which the tops of the sampled waveforms retain their natural shape, which we have an illustration to the right. And then we have flat top sampling, also practical, and it samples the voltage and it's held constant during those samples, creating a staircase effect. And this is also illustrated to the right. Now here's where we start getting into the meat and potatoes of the lesson, the Nyquist frequency. Nyquist frequency is the minimum sample frequency, which must be at least twice the highest input frequency. So let me give you an example. If you're sampling a signal that has an input of one hertz, you have to sample at a minimum of two hertz. Now this is just the minimum. Ideally, you want to sample more because the more you sample, the less error you have on your waveform. Now here's a little food for thought. And a CD has a frequency bandwidth of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Well, your CD players have a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz. So that is twice as much as a 20 kilohertz input signal. Next, we have stage two, which is quantization. Quantization is the process of segmenting a sampled signal into different voltage levels, each level corresponding to a different binary number. Now these levels are referred to as quantiles or quantization levels. And the more levels you have can correspond to the resolution or how accurate your sampled signal is. So if you look at the illustration below, I have an input signal which is in blue and it's being sampled and then thrown in levels, which is expressed in purple. So if I have more levels, I can actually get a more accurate waveform as an output. Now, the less levels you have, you can have a, a majority of error, and that's quantization error, which we're not going to get into in this lesson. We'll get into that in a later lesson. But for now, we'll just go over quantization of how to calculate your different levels as well as your resolution. The last stage is encoding. Encoding is the process of designating each quantitative level by a code. Typically, the code is a binary sequence. If you look at the illustration of right and in the red, you'll see each quantitative level is encoded with just a binary sequence of one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. Very simple. 
Now these sequences can be converted into a string of pulses. Be aware some of your textbooks and some of your PE references may have various types of encoding methods. For example, I have a small illustration on the left there, which goes just goes over four of the simple ones, which is uh, bipolar RZ, unipolar NRZ, and so on and so forth. I really won't be getting to the deep in the weeds on those particular ones for this lesson, but just be aware they do exist. Now, majority of this lesson, we've been focusing on pulse code modulation. However, as we stated earlier, there's delta modulation as well. Delta modulation is very similar to PCM. However, it only indicates whether your analog system is either increasing or decreasing in slope. So if you look at the illustration below, as the input signal increases, you can see your delta signal having ones. When it's flattening off a little bit, it's going to oscillate. And then as it decreases, it has zeros. So that's pretty much the only differences between the two. Also be aware of delta modulation is also referred to as slope modulation. All right, now let's go ahead and jump into a few practice problems to get our feet wet. All right, so let's get into our first exam problem. When researching for a replacement microphone, you came across a USB microphone for a very reasonable price. The specifications for this microphone are as follows. Frequency response, 20 hertz to 16 kilohertz. Sampling rate, 44.1 kilohertz, 16 bit. Input voltage, 5 volt, makes sense, USB. Output voltage, 2 volts, peak to peak. So the first thing we want to find out is, does the microphone meet the Nyquist frequency requirement? We want to determine the quantile intervals, and we want to determine the resolution. All right, so we just want to find out everything we can about this microphone. So the first thing we're going to look at is the Nyquist frequency, number one. Well, the Nyquist frequency says your sampling rate must be a minimum of two times your maximum input signal. So our maximum input signal is 16 kilohertz. So F of A is 16 kilohertz. And yeah, as usual, forgive my handwriting. So we need to know if our sampling rate is at least two times that. Well, if we multiply this times two, it's going to give us an answer of 32 kilohertz. So is the sampling rate greater than or equal to 32 kilohertz? Yes, it is. It's 44.1. So right away, the answer is yes. Can't make every question hard. All right, next, we need to determine the quantile interval. All right, here's a little more fun comes in. Now the quantile interval, we can find by looking for L. That's what we want. So it's this guy right here. Well, we know the sampling rate is a 16-bit sampling rate. And N is the number of bits. So right there we have your levels equal L equals 2 to the N, which comes out to be 2 to the 16 which if we plug and chug this on our calculator, very easy, 65,536 levels. That's not bad, it's a good amount of levels. Next, we need to determine the resolution. So we want to know how accurate this is. So, number three, resolution. So we're looking for, in this case, Q. Now be aware, some of your FE uh, reference material may actually refer to as Q as your level. I'm sticking with L for this one, one, because L is easy to remember for level as well as a majority of my PE references refer to the level with L and the resolution with Q. So I'm going with the majority favors. So Q wins. So Q is this guy right there. And we have resolution equals your maximum voltage or your full scale voltage. In this case, two volts peak to peak over two of N which is going to be your levels. So in this case, we'll go ahead and put 65,536. And if we plug and chug that in our calculator, it's going to give us an answer of 3.05 times 10 to negative 5 volts per level. So now you know between two volts peak to peak, you have 65,536 levels. If you map this out, it's gonna be time, voltage. So every single one of these levels, it's gonna be a level of 3.05 times 10 to the negative five volts for each level. It's gonna increment by that much. 
All right, now that we got our feet wet, let's do another problem. For this one, we got a good one. Per design project, you were tasked with providing a temperature sensor to be integrated with a microcontroller. You found a wireless temperature sensor which provides an analog output of negative 10 volts to 10 volts and a temperature range of 0 degrees Fahrenheit to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So the first thing we want to do is determine the accuracy in volts and temperature with an 8-bit word rate. Well, this one's pretty simple. Accuracy refers to resolution, which is Q. So we want to find that. Well, Q equals your full scale voltage. So we're going to say V full scale over, and this is the 2 to the number of bits. So now here's the part that's tricky and usually trips people up. When you see negative 10 to 10 volts, that doesn't mean there's a 10 volt scale. It means you have to do your full scale, which is negative 10 to 0 and then 0 to 10. So you have a 20 volt scale right here. So if you're plotting this in your equation here, it's going to be 10 minus negative 10 volts. And that would obviously give you 20 volts. OK, does that make sense? And obviously, same thing here. You're going to have 2 to the number of bits, which we talked about as an 8-bit word rate. So that's going to be 2 to the 8. And 2 to the 8 in your calculator is going to be 256. OK, so you just found the number of levels for this particular sensor as 256 levels. Plug and chug that in our calculator. So it's going to be 20 over 256, which is going to give us a resolution of 0 0.0781. This is volts per step, or in this case, per level, same thing. Now we also want to find the temperature accuracy. For this one, you're going to do the same concept. It's going to be your resolution equals your full scale. Now your full scale for this one is 0 to 150 degrees. So this one's going to be 150 degrees. And we'll say Fahrenheit, keep it consistent. And this is over 2 to the n, which is we already know is 256. So plug and chug that in a calculator just as easy. Give you a temperature resolution of 0 0.586 degrees Fahrenheit per step. So every time it increments, it's going to increment approximately 0.6 degrees at a time on your microcontroller. All right, number two. So what is the temperature if the output voltage displayed 5 volts? Well, for this one, we're going to utilize the same equation, but we're going to manipulate a little bit. So for number two, we have the resolution equals voltage full scale divided by R2 to our bit rate. Now for this one, I want to determine what my binary number is. So in short, we're going to manipulate it and use a little algebra. We're going to say we want to know our binary number equals voltage full scale over our resolution. Because we already know our resolution, and we're going to know our full scale in a second. So moving on, voltage full scale is not going to be 20 volts. For this one, it's going to be negative 10 to 5 volts, because you want to know what it is at the 5 volt level, which means it's going to be 5 volts minus negative 10 volts. And that's going to be over your resolution, which we determined right there, which is 0 0.0781. And then cleaning this up, 5 minus negative 10 is going to be 15 volts. Now the way we got this is negative 10 to 0, 10 volts, and then 0 to 5, 5 volts. So again, negative 10 to 5, it's going to be 15 volts. And then you're going to divide that by our resolution. And if you plug and chug that in your calculator, you're going to have a binary number of 192, approximately. And that's going to be a base 2. Now, we want to find the temperature. Well, by using this guy right here, we can find our temperature. So same concept as this guy right here. We have our resolution equals our temperature over our binary number, which is 192. So same thing as earlier. I can say 
our binary number times our resolution. So it's going to be 192 times our temperature resolution, which is 0 0.586 degrees Fahrenheit per step. And obviously that's our step or our level in this case, equals our temperature. And if you plug and chug that in your calculator, your temperature is going to equal 112.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's just that simple. So if your microcontroller read 5 volts from your sensor, it's going to think your sensor is reading 112.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I didn't go into quantization error or signal noise ratio for this particular problem. However, I want to get your feet wet as far as understanding the levels and the resolution. So I hopefully there's enough information here to make you dangerous. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know, and I hope you all have a good day.